Welcome in to another uh, Rolling With My Special Friends podcast. Today we got an absolutely amazing guy that uh, comes to us all the way from Florida. He is uh, enjoys working. He's got some uh, different activities he's been involved with. He's been a uh, – works for a sports team. He's worked at a graphics store. He's worked with his church editing videos. He's also worked in an outdoor store over his, over his uh, year. So we want to bring him in and talk to him about some of these things and also ask his dad about a few things. So, uh, Tyler, how are you today? Doing good. Good. Tell, tell us, uh, let's just get this thing started right. We were talking about you working in an outdoor store. What, what was that like? It was uh, fun. Uh, I got to meet a lot of people, got to um, experience the work. Uh, industry uh, at an early age. Okay. And uh, I, I really have a passion for hunting and fishing um, and just thought that would be a good fit. Um, and when I, when I met you, a fellow handicapped or disabled person, I, I thought that would be uh, really interesting to, to work with you and to see how, how you uh, managed to get around and uh and running stores and and uh, all that so it was fun so so tell us in working with that job there in in an outdoor store were there times uh that you felt things may have been like challenging you know as far as like bending over and getting stuff or doing things did you feel any challenges um not really physically i remember one day we were doing we were um, filling oil, filling uh, flyers for an event that we had at the store coming, and uh, we all had to, had to do the old uh, lick, lick with your, with your uh, tongue and all that, and, uh, and folding and all that. And I, uh, I remember at one point I was like, am I going to be able to keep up with this and, and do a good job? <laughs> and I figured it was Tommy Manor. Right. But it, it all turned out good. Well, good. That, that's that's uh, what I was glad to know that you were getting a good experience and learning some things there. Now, when you moved from from working, like say the outdoor store, and we talked about you uh, just now, or mentioned you working with the church, working with the sound system, I believe, and editing videos and stuff. T- tell us about that. I uh, I uh, run our audio ministry. Um, edit audio that uh sermons that our pastor preaches and uh, make them available to whoever wants to buy a CD or whatever um i got into it uh not long after we got there i uh there's a guy there that had had approached me and and said would you like to uh, learn about this and and, uh, help me with this job and and i prayed about it and and uh thought it would be a fun would be fun to get into and learn how to do. Um, and I eventually, uh, hey, let me, let me, uh, take over. And, uh, I've been doing that for a while for a couple, for a few years. Um, and, uh, he since passed away. So I'm kind of, kind of feel like I've got a, uh, bigger, bigger shoes to feel like, I guess you'd say. Um, but, that all went good, and uh, COVID hit last year, and all that mess. So we had we uh, we went online doing all the um, everything online and putting the terms online. So you know, I rarely have a, a CD order. I maybe had I maybe had like two this year. So it, it's going down, but I still have a masters for me. Um, um, whoever, for whoever wants to see the, all I gotta do is stick the master in the, in the duplicator and burn it. And, uh, but like I said, I, I've only got like, I've only had like two orders this, since this year. So, um, but yeah, I, I still, I enjoy doing it. Um, I enjoy helping people getting, uh, the message out to people and, uh, just doing an encouragement. All right, so now we we uh, know that you're doing working with the sports team now too, right? Are you doing? I heard you were doing a uh, keeping the score, doing the sports table. We, I am. I uh, I've been doing that for 
a handful of years. I, uh, I got into it again when uh, uh, our youth pastor at the time was asking me about it. He was doing it. And I, I got into it. I was hesitant because it was new and it was it was uh, somewhat important and it was fast paced. But as I've gotten through the years of doing it, I've learned to keep up and uh, I'm, I know what to do. So it's it's a lot of fun. So now, would you uh, recommend this for people that are out there listening? Other people would would you recommend that other people to do it? Yes, if. Uh, just as a way to help out um, in the school. And, uh, you know, I love sports anyway. You know, I love uh, basketball and baseball and, well, not necessarily much baseball, but, but basketball and football. Okay. But we don't have a football team. And uh, so, so I, and I, I enjoy basketball. So, um, and it's a good way to, to learn, learn something new. Um, and volleyball. And, and I do volleyball as well. I, uh, we've got a great coach that's we've gone into the championship at least twice this year, at least twice in the past couple of years. And uh, so that's been fun. Um, and just, just learning the different, different aspects of, of each sport and the what all is involved in, in running the scores. It, it's a lot. People, people may not know. I may, may not understand what all goes into it, but it's you got to really pay attention or you'll mess up, which I've done that multiple times <laughs> over the years. But it, it's it's been fun. Well, I, I can tell you, no matter what we what you do, we all mess up in things. I I, ma- I make mistakes all the time, so I wouldn't feel bad about making a mistake. I think you actually learn from your mistakes, and that, that's a good thing. Tell me now, I, and I follow you on the social media and, and see a lot of things you do on there and a lot of posts. Tell me where the passion came from. I, I see you basically putting a verse up uh, from the Bible every day. Where, where did that come from? Um, it come, came from uh, just wanting to get, uh, just to be an encouragement to people, people get, get uh, verses out and get uh uh, just get spiritual things, you know, flowing, you know, through social media, you see a lot of uh, negativity and political stuff and much to mess, really. I'm just wanted, I just wanted to throw that out and uh, just to be an encouragement to, to people and to really spark their interest in spiritual things. Well, I, I really uh, admire you for that, too, because it's, a blessing to me and a lot of other people that get to see it every day. You know, a lot of times people see things on social media that they don't click on or respond to, but they see it. And I think you just putting that seed out there and letting them see it, they have to think about it. And I, I think that's really uh, inspirational on your part to be able to put that up every day and make sure that people get that reminder that they need. Um, tell me, I, I know every day we, we talked about some jobs and we've talked about social media and other things. Tell me about in your house there, how, how, how helpful is mom during the day? Uh, she's very helpful. Uh, she's, she helps me, uh, you know, do with, do with the morning routine. Um, she, she goes lately. She's been going out and getting, uh, getting, uh, stuff that I need for personal things. Um, it's just I can't get out or don't get out as much. Um, that's been very helpful. And she, she uh, you know, does my laundry, does my ironing, uh, cooks food for me, and it's just, she's just a real blessing. My good. Can you send her to my house? Because I need all those things done, too. <laughs> all right. Well, let's see. Uh, Dad, uh, give us some uh, some stories here. Tell us what... Give us a definition of what spina bifida is. Um, spina bifida uh, occurs very early in uh, after conception. It's when the the spine doesn't properly close into a tube like it's supposed to be, and because of that, you know, there's a wide range of issues that happen because of that. Uh, some of them are just neuro neurological. Some of them are uh, orthopedic as well. And Tyler has has it we found it in a uh, ultrasound uh, early in the pregnancy 
uh, and he has, I guess you would categorize a more severe case of it, uh, but the Lord has blessed him with just fantastic health. So now, now tell us what, uh, if I'm going to say this right, shunt, tell us what, what that is and what the purposes are those. The majority of spina bifida uh, patients have hydrocephalus or they have water on their head. And it's because the ventricles in their head don't properly drain the fluid out of their head and, and out into their body. So they go in and put a shunt in, uh, basically a valve up where in the top of the ventricles are and it drains down. There's different types, but basically it takes the pressure out of it, off of your head. And Tyler had one, uh, they put one in not too long after he was born at uh, Children's Hospital in Birmingham. And then he had a small revision to it um, very shortly after that. Uh, and then uh, his first shunt, you, you know, I think usually a lifespan on a shunt is, you know, six, eight, maybe 10 years. His first shunt lasted about 16 years, which was almost unheard of. Um, and he's had a couple of revisions since then, but uh, a shunts are really critical to maintain the proper pressures in your head. Now, how would, if I was a family out there and, and we were going through that process or thinking about it, how, how do you relate to the, the, the pressures in the head? Are there signs that let them know that the shunt needs to be changed out? Yeah, I mean, usually when when a person's having issues with the pressures in their head, they're going to become lethargic. Uh, they can probably have pretty severe headaches. They may have nausea and stuff like that from it. Tyler is is one of those very small percentiles. It's asymptomatic. His shunt can be malfunctioning and he not have any symptoms whatsoever, which as was the case, you know, when he was about sixteen, when we have it, had to have it replaced, he didn't have any symptoms at all. They just found it doing their annual checkups. Okay. So now, and I also know there's another part involved here. Tell us uh, or explain to everybody listening what scoliosis is. All right. Um, so scoliosis is a curvature from side to side in the spine. And then there's also a kyphosis, which is a, a curvature front to back in the spine. Uh, like I said, in spina bifida patients, you may meet one that doesn't have any issues with both those. And then you'll have some like Tyler who have a pretty severe bend forward and a bend to one side. So it, you know, it, it varies so much. That's, that's the, I'm not unique thing, but I guess kind of peculiar thing about spina bifida is that it manifests itself in such severe or such almost, you know, unrecognizable symptoms. Okay. So, and I also heard in this process, of a lot of these things happening when he were younger uh, about re the removal of growth plates. Can you tell me why they would remove those? Yeah, I think I was talking to my wife. I think he was about eight or nine at, at the point where this happened or maybe a little bit younger, but the, the scoliosis and the kyphosis were so severe that uh, it was really impacting him, you know, physically. Uh, he has a, you know, a significant lean to the right and it was getting where it was compressing on his lungs and just creating a lot of issues on the inside. And so it was only getting worse. So they did a really major surgery, went in and took out uh, the growth plates on his uh, uh, spine. I don't remember how many they did, but it was enough to keep the spine stabilized. Okay. Your, your only other option in those situations is they're going to go in and put rods in and he was way too young for rods. Right. So now, now let's get into a little bit of the, the life story here from, from birth to let's say right before teenager, probably 10, 11 years old area. What kind of hurdles did we have there? Or were there things that doctors said, Hey, you know, uh, you guys need to be looking out for these type of things. Is there something you'd let families know to be looking for? I mean, even though Tyler has, uh, I would say a severe case of the orthopedic issues, uh, the rest of the issues, he's not had hardly any, and you would, that's kind of uncommon. Uh, you know, he had the usual uh, things that spinal bifida kids have. He had to have, uh, he had club feet. So he had to have club foot release. Uh, you know, like I said, he had a shunt revision. Uh, he had the growth plates uh, removed. But, you know, by and large, he was, he's always been very healthy, hardly ever sick. Only time he's pretty much ever been in the hospital in that time period was if he was there for some type of procedure. Uh, but, um, you know, had a pretty normal childhood as best he could. Right. Uh, 
uh, started them off in a special school that uh, our county that we were living in Alabama at the time, and they had a special school for kids with special needs. And he started there, did that for a few years, and then uh, we did homeschooling for a while, and uh, just did a, different things, whatever best met his needs at the time. But you know, there there were challenges. I mean, you know, getting wheelchairs and getting a van that's accessible. You know, there's a lot of hurdles you have to go through. Um, but you know, it's, it's manageable. Well, now I also heard a little interesting tidbit from that young age, uh, a story that you had uh, shared with me as well, that I think our listeners would really love to hear. Tell me about the advantages of having Tyler on a baseball team. <laughs> so, uh, um, we lived in Millbrook, Alabama at the time. They had a big uh, youth baseball program. And the first year, uh, he and his, his middle brother, Evan, played. And then uh, the coach that year right, uh, moved on up with his son, who was older. And so I became the coach the next year. And so uh, the league didn't have any issues or any precautions with Tyler playing. So we always let Tyler play shortstop. And Tyler could catch the ball. But, of course, getting down to the ground was an issue because he's in a wheelchair. But, you know, a wheelchair makes a nice little wall uh between second and third base and that's kind of the way we played it which you know in hindsight probably wasn't the most fair thing in the world but you know <laughs> we dealt with it and uh we had an awesome season had great kids on our team uh i just i mean incredible support by the team and by the league for tyler getting to play uh and we ended up that was 1997 we ended up winning the league championship so, so he literally took the word shortstop to a huge advantage. It was more of a long stop. Oh, okay. Well, there you go. So, so when we roll, roll from these young age here into the teenage years, tell me about high school. Were there, were there advantages, disadvantages, things that, what went on in high school? Um, we did some homeschooling. Uh, Tyler wasn't participating in any sports at that time period. Uh, but, you know, he was very interested in, in uh, the outdoors and able, was able to do a lot of things that way. Uh, we attended, he attended a, um, a, an academy in Montgomery for a while that had some things that were more geared to his specific needs. But, uh, I mean, uh, we're, we have a Christian home um, and we very much value Christian education. And so, you know, when we homeschool, obviously we have Christian curriculum. And then he finished up at uh, Victory in Millbrook, uh, able to finish there his senior year and, and graduated with the kids that he'd grown up with. He hadn't been in class with all the time, but still knew them, you know, very closely. And, and uh, you know, you're, you're, we tried to make uh, his growing up as normal as it was possible. Uh, tried to, you know, let him take care, take advantage of everything that, that was available to him. Um, and I haven't asked him, but I, I don't think he feels slighted when he was growing up. <laughs> so in that high school era, then we're talking about, you feel like everything was pretty well comfortable. There was nothing that you felt, you know, gosh, looking back on it, I'd tell a parent, maybe, maybe do this. No, I think the thing, I, the only thing I might regret was he went to work for this shady character running a sporting goods store. That was kind of a problem that we, <laughs> no, we were, we were very blessed. Um, you know, he got to participate in, you know, the junior senior stuff and, and um, we, you know, it's, it's not always easy. And, you know, there are, there are things about having a child that's in a wheelchair that can be frustrating at times and, things break down and, and don't always work the right way. And, you know, even though our world has um, ADA requirements, not everybody lives up to them. You know, not everybody's going to have a wheelchair ramp where they're supposed to have it. And, and you know, there's things that you deal with and get around it, but uh, it's, I mean, the, the struggles that you have in the big scheme of things aren't, aren't really humongous hurdles to get over. Yeah. The Lord blessed Tyler with such great health. I mean, it was, and, and has just blessed him uh, so significantly through the years. I, you know, it'd be, be kind of strange for me to be complaining about things. Right. Well, now, and speaking of that, let, let's roll right into that. I know you guys are a great, huge uh, Christian family, and you really got strong beliefs there. And I, I want you to share a story with, with everybody that you've shared with me 
that about Tyler going for some scans and finding something on his brain? Because I think this is an absolutely amazing story that people need to hear. When we moved to Florida in 2008, of course, we had to find all new doctors. And um, one of the advantages of living near a big city is, you know, you have really good quality doctors. And we were able to, to uh, get in, be a patient with one of the best neurologists here uh, in the state. And uh, Dr. Smith is just a wonderful doctor and was very, um, I'll say, aggressive in making sure that, you know, Tyler was, uh, he was keeping track of Tyler when I was going with him and he was doing regular scans and all of that. And uh, in the, one of his annual checkups, they were doing a CT scan of his head and they found something on the scan that concerned him. It hadn't been there last time. I, I don't know if you call it just uh, just a spot on the scan or, or some type of mass or whatever, but it was something that was very concerning to him. And of course it was very concerning to us, obviously. So he said, look, I want you to come back in three months um, and uh, let's double check that to make sure and see what's going on if it's growing or what's going on. So, so we've made the appointment and, and, uh, just started praying about it. You know, Lord, that, you know, we were praying that you'll intervene in the situation. We, we know you don't have to, we know that you don't always, but we're just asking you even in this situation, if you would intervene here and, uh, had our church pray about it and our friends pray about it. And when we went back for our scan in three months, um, much to our doctor's surprise, the uh, the spot on the scan was gone. Of course, he, you know, we we believe wholeheartedly that the Lord intervened in the situation. You know, the doctor wasn't so convinced of that, but you know, with all due respect, I didn't really care what he thought it was. <laughs> that's correct. No, I I man, I'm just blown away by the whole story because that's one of those things that exactly what you said that I I believe myself that God stepped in there and fixed that problem and and doctors and medical. People sometimes, you know, have explained to me before that they're just practicing medicine. So they don't know a lot of times what happens and, and they need to be able to put their faith into something and know there's somebody else out there that's a greater physician than they are. So tell me, tell me the uh, steps now where we are in life. Are, are there any new medical challenges going on? Or is there anything new in Tyler's life as he gets a little older? Well, a few years ago, we had had a, a pretty big deal with, uh, he got a, a, a UTI, urinary tract infection. Uh, you know, anybody in a wheelchair that's going to have issues like that from time to time, but he got a really severe case. We couldn't get it with antibiotics, ended up in the hospital, spent a few days there, got out, was in much better, and then got sick again. Turned out he had a stab infection. Um, so we were back in the hospital for a week or so. Uh, 2019, we had a, uh, he had developed a, a, a large kidney stone, too large to pass. And again, he didn't, you know, he didn't know that he had it. We just found that with annual checkups and they went in, broke it up, took it out. There was complications with that. So, you know, even, even with those hiccups, those bumps in the road, I mean, Tyler's had such incredibly good health. Um, and even those, you know, once they were taken care of, he hasn't had any more issues with them. Um, you know, I, uh, there's lots of people that have, you know, just constant health issues. And, and God has just given Tyler really good health. And he's just, he's never had that problem. Wow. Well, that that's uh, a great thing to know in itself that you got that kind of uh, help to go along with the other challenges. And it, it really makes a difference when your body's in good shape. It helps fight off a lot of stuff. So now, now tell everybody out there listening, we want to get into, get away from some medical here and, and get into some fun stuff. Tell us some kind of funny off the wall Tyler story that the world don't know. I, I was thinking of this. I mean, I can think of some funny stories, but to me, the, the cooler stories are the things we have gotten to do specifically because of Tyler, um, because he's in a wheelchair. Uh, I remember the first time we went to Tuscaloosa to a football game. Oh, yeah. I think it was me and you and Evan, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. And uh, somebody told us, said, look, you need to go over to this hotel. Let's, full disclaimer, I'm not a big Alabama fan. I don't know all the, all the people that are really important in the Alabama football program, so pardon my ignorance on some of this. But anyway, so they said, you need to go to this hotel because that's where the team stays, and they'll, when they come out, you'll get to see all of them. So 
Tyler and Evan are both big Alabama fans. So we went over there. We were just standing outside waiting for the players. And, you know, people are standing around talking. And a guy walked up to us and said, hey, how are y'all doing? And he started chatting us up. And he said, well, you guys don't need to stand out here. Come follow us. Come follow me. So he took us inside the hotel. And uh, he proceeded to start introducing us to all these different people. Some were parents of current players. Some were very famous uh, former players. Uh, such as Bart Starr, who was just the nicest guy, just super nice fella, just sat and talked to us for a few minutes. And then he took us further into the hotel where there was a specific line where the people came, where the players and the coaches came by. And so we were standing right there in the front of the line. And, you know, but for Tyler being there, that never would have happened. It was a, you know, it was a really cool experience, something I'd say not a lot of people get to experience. And, you know, there's, just tons of stories like that that have gone on during our life of things that we got to do because Tyler, you know, we got to go to the front of the line for this ride at, a, at an amusement park or, you know, we got to meet this person or, you know, uh, here's another funny one. <laughs> we were, remember when we were at Dollywood? Oh, yeah. We were at Dollywood, they were opening a uh, Southern Gospel Museum and Dolly Parton obviously was going to be there. And so, uh, you know, she comes through, she makes her presentation, and then she stops and talks to Tyler. She didn't talk to anybody else. She stops and talks to Tyler. Wow. So you're, and so basically you're living with a celebrity then is what you are. Pretty much. Well, see, I mean, it has its advantages. That, that uh, I'd love to know that I could go to the theme parks and get at the uh, front of all those lines. <laughs> It's all in who you know. That is that is absolutely correct. Big T is uh, definitely somebody that we all need to know. So, so tell us when we kind of try to uh, wrap this thing up in a bundle for our uh, signature series question, Dad. Um, if it was all over tomorrow and we uh, were to read a book wrote about Tyler's life, uh, what what would you hope people read? Um, I hope people would read that God highly blessed his life and that Tyler led a life that I believe was pleasing to the Lord and, and tried to do things that were honoring, glorifying to him. Uh, didn't lead a life. that was all about himself. Didn't lead a life uh, where he was frustrated and bitter over the situation he was in. I mean, it's not, wasn't a surprise to God that he was born as fine a bit, but uh, it was part of his plan. Um, I don't think everybody could handle it. Uh, both parent and child. Uh, I don't know that everybody's wired specifically where they can handle that stuff. I think God only puts on you what you can handle. Uh, and he knew that Tyler could handle it. He knew that we as his parents were not special. We're not, you know, these incredible parents. Uh, but the Lord blessed us with Tyler, with the situation he's in. And, I, and you know, I, I pray that the Lord will be pleased with it and that it will be an encouragement um, and a challenge to other people. Well, no, I 100% agree with that statement. I think it is very special uh, to have him in your life as well as everybody else's life because he's provided a lot of things that, you know, it doesn't get spoken out there a lot. Like I said, the social media, there's things that people say and do that, you know, are inspired by Tyler that, that you never see that on the front page of a paper or you never read it in a magazine. Or And I think there's a ton of those people out there that need these stories told because Tyler's one of those people that are inspiring somebody every day and we just don't get to see the headline, but that doesn't mean he's not out there doing the work for uh, the Lord and making things happen for other people. So, Tyler, tell us um, how can, if somebody wants to be your uh, friend on Facebook, how do they do that? Uh, I just look my name up, Tyler Simpleton, um, um, and uh, uh, you'll, I don't remember um, what picture is up right now, but. Um, if you if they look in the description at the bottom, the the personal info, they'll see I think Tampa, Florida, and and that's me. Okay. Uh, and be a blessing to to have more friends and to get to know more people. Well, and I think it would be uh, a great thing for all these people out there listening too to to become your friend because I think they would really get somebody that would be inspiring to them every day and, and give them some positive outlooks on life uh, and through a lot of these troubling times we got going on. So I want to uh, thank you two guys for coming on and spending the morning with us. And uh, hopefully 
in a little bit of time, a few more things happen in life. We'll catch back, circle these wagons back around and have another interview with you. Would you love to come back on later? Yes, I would. Okay. Sure. All right. Well, thank you guys very much for uh, coming on and we'll talk to you next time. Yep. All right, thank you. Thanks for the opportunity.